gang, welcome back. I'm coming at you today with a video on slope and deflection uh, of beams, kind of an introduction video. I want to make this video so that you get a kind of a physical understanding of what's going on here before we get into the equations, because I think this really helps you to understand what it is we're looking for, okay? So what we're talking about today is as beams get loaded, think about our shear moment diagrams, right? And as we have beams and they get loaded, beams deflect and do different things, right? Now I have a super flexible metal ruler here. It's called a stays put. You know why? Because it stays put wherever you put it, it stays there. Maybe it hadn't heard about Newton's first law. You know, an object at rest just stays there until somebody moves it, right? <laughs> but anyway, I highly suggest... To understand these problems we're going to look at, that you have a little metal ruler. Now, you don't have to have one that, this one's a foot long. I mean a foot long, a yard long. You can only have one that's 12 inches because they're easy to bend and kind of get to see, oh, okay, I can tell what's going on here, and I can see the deflections and get a physical understanding about what it is we're looking at here, okay? So I have drawn on the board here a couple of different beams and just with some different connections to kind of just show you uh, how these beams are going to deflect, okay? So we're going to look, we've got one up here that's fixed and then pinned with the load in the middle, then pin and roller, load on the end, and then pin and roller with uh, two loads on it, okay? We're going to talk about the slope and the deflection. So first I want you just to get an idea of like, what would the slope look like if this beam had that load on it? What would it look like, right? So if we had this one up here, now, this one has a fixed connection on the end of it, okay? So remember, a fixed connection means that it's, it's locked. It can't move, okay? So even if I have a fixed connection, now this is deflecting under its own weight, but look what's happening right at the wall. The beam is flat. There's zero deflection at the wall, and then it starts to slope, right? So right at the wall, there's none. Now, what if the wall was a pin connection? What would happen? Wah, wah. Right, it wouldn't make a very good support that way, would it? So with a pin connection, it can move all over the place, right? It'd be like putting it on your hand and letting it swivel there. But if I hold it and I make a fixed connection, now it can't move, it's gonna be flat there, okay? So it's important to make that distinction. So over here, we have a fixed connection at the wall, okay? Now on this side over here, we have a pin connection. Okay, so what is that beam going to look like? It's going to look something like that. So that load, as it deflects, is going to look just like that. Let me, let me take this away and I'll sketch it. Okay, where's my blue sketchy marker here? Okay, here we go. So that deflection, the deflected beam is going to come off the wall and deflect and come up something like that. Now this is very exaggerated, okay? But we need to identify a couple of things on each one of these beams. And the couple of things we need to identify are this, the slope and the deflection. Because anytime we can identify, think about if I had an equation that had one of these slopes and deflection in it, if I knew what the slope and the deflection was at a point, I could maybe plug that into the equation and maybe solve for something, okay? And that's exactly what we're gonna do, okay? So what do we just absolutely know here, right? This beam's going to deflect like this. Well, here's what I know. At this wall over here, okay? I don't know. We'll call this A and we'll call this B, okay? At A, right at the wall, right? Remember, I was holding that. What is the slope? Right here, the slope, okay? Well, and, and I'll tell you what. Uh, let me smear that. The slope is given by theta, okay? So it's just an angle, Okay, the slope there is, well, it's zero degrees, right? It's completely flat right at the wall, okay? And then what else do I know? The deflection, right, the delta right at the wall is zero, okay? The deflection is zero. And typically the deflection, we just call that y, the amount of movement up and down. So at the wall at zero. So at this point right here, I know a couple of things about that beam. Now over here, I know it has deflection. I know it has a slope. I got no idea what it is though. 
But at some point, I go from being going downhill to start going back uphill. And at that point, right there, guess what? The slope is equal to zero. Now, the problem is I may or may not know where that point is, okay? Uh, some other things that I know, if I get over here at this point, the slope on that side of that line, there is a slope there, and the slope on the other side, right, right at that point, this y, we'll call it y1, is equal to this y. Right, the slope, just one molecule on that side of the dot is the same as the slope as one molecule on that side of the dot, right? And then over here at B, what do I know? Do I know the slope at a pin? Mm, it, there is slope, but I don't have any idea what it is. But here's what I do know. At this pin over here, Y has to be equal to zero. There is no deflection because it's got to come back up to that pin, right? So those things, which are called our boundary conditions, you know, being able to identify these things, just using logic, just using your head, super -de duper -de important, okay? What does this guy look like? I don't know. Where's my B, okay? I'm pinned here, all right? But what do I have over here? I'm, I'm gonna use my, just my finger as the roller connection. I'm pinned here, and I have a roller there, and then I have, the load over there, what's it doing? The load is just pushing it down, right? But look, between the pin and the roller, what's happening? It's kind of humped up a little bit, isn't it, right? So what does that beam look like? That beam kind of looks like this. Okay. So again, what do I know about this guy? Over here, I know there is deflection. I know there is slope. I got no idea what it is though, right? But right there, what do I know? It has slope. Again, this side of the thing and that side of the thing, the dot, right? The slope y1 has to equal y, um, y. That's not slope. That's not slope. This wasn't slope either, was it? Why did you put y for slope? No, that's theta. Sorry. Theta 1, theta 2, right? So here, theta 1 equals theta 2. Okay, what do we know about the deflection at that point? Well, the deflection is y, and at that roller, it has to equal zero. Again, what about over here? Well, it's got slope. I don't know what it is, but I do know that y has to be equal to zero. There is no deflection at that pin. Are you kind of catching on? This is just kind of logic stuff, isn't it? Now, what in the world is that one going to look like? Well, let's see. Because now what? We're pinned over here and we're rollered over here, okay? But we got a force in the middle. So we're kind of going to be a little bit of an S curve. You see that? It goes down, goes back up to the roller, and then on that end, back down again, doesn't it? Okay? So what's that going to look like? Kind of like this down and then back up and then back down again okay well, that's kind of all of this is very exaggerated right i mean who's going to build a beam out of the world's flimsiest ruler i mean we're not doing that right okay so again what do i know okay here's what i know at this point right here uh there's no deflection so y equals zero at this point right here there's no deflection y equals zero Right, do I know anything about slope? Mm, I know that it's zero somewhere over here, right? Slope is zero. But do I know where it is? Is it necessarily right under that force right there? Well, if that force was exactly in between these two forces, or these two points, rather, and it was completely symmetric, I'd say, yeah, probably. But if it was more to this side, the force may actually keep on going down past the force and then come back up. So I can't really say where that's zero, but I do know that the deflection there is zero and the deflection there is zero, okay? Now, I don't know what it is over there at all. Okay, are you with me so far? <laughs> okay, yes, this is very confusing, but I hope what I'm demonstrating here is just a visual of what some of those deflections kind of look like, the, the slope of deflection. And again, these things are called our boundary conditions, okay? 
boundary conditions. Okay. Let's look at one more. And what I have over here is just a beam. And what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to show you, here's what we're getting into, okay? Here's what we're getting into. What is he doing? Okay. We've done this before. We call this L for load curve. Share moment diagrams. Share moment diagrams. Okay. Here was the V curve, right? This this was the integral of that. What is the integral of this? Well, that was the bending moment curve. Why did you draw two more, though? Because I can integrate this one and get the next thing, which is the slope. Okay? The integral of the M diagram gives me the slope. I can tell you the angle of the beam at any point along its length. What? What? Then I can integrate the slope one more time, okay? And I get the deflection of the beam. How much is it from there to there? How much is it from there to there? What about over there to there, right? I'm going to be able to calculate that with some equations. That's an E right there, by the way, deflection, okay? So, one, two, three, four, five things. I can integrate four times to get down to there. It's going to take a lot of math, y'all. But it's not super hard, but it's going to take a lot of brain power. But, but I, I got you, okay? Here we go. Let me do this for you. Okay. Can we plot this? No, you only have letters. We can. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's try it. Where'd my blue marker go? All right, let me see here. Let's see if we can do this. Here's my blue marker, okay? Global equilibrium up here, you know, I've got what? I've got an AY, and then maybe I have this, right? An MA. I got an AX, but he's zero, okay? So I've got this, right? So can we graph this? What would the, and, I, and what I'm just worried about here is what does the shape look like, right? The, M, the V diagram, okay? Boom, AY Van Halen force, might as well. Oh, jump, okay? No change, no change, no change. Bam, what? P goes down, whoop, and then whoop, zero all the way out, right? This is what our V diagram looks like, okay? We have shear from here to here, no shear out there, and then that bending moment on there doesn't affect this diagram, but I bet it affects this one, don't you think, okay? Let's go down to the next one. What do you get? You get down here, okay? We start off with a kitchen force. Remember this guy? A moment. In the kitchen, the clock is above and the counter is below. And let's see what this is. That's counterclockwise, so it's going to make us go down, isn't it? So here we go. Whoop. And then what? I'm going to come up some from this shape here, okay? So up, okay? And then from here to here, how much moment was there over there? None. So no change, no change, no change. And then what? What do I have over there? Another concentrated moment. And that guy is a counter below, right? So it's going to drop me down. Take me home to the place I belong. On my moment prayer, back to zero. Okay. And <laughs> there you go. And that would be your moment graph. That would be what that looks like. So what about the slope? Okay, let's see if we can kind of think about that for a second. What would the slope of this guy look like? Okay, because what we got here is I've got a fixed connection on this end, and then it goes down, but on this end over here, what? There's somebody that's like twisting on it, which is going to make it go back up. So I might get something like, like that. Okay. Because I'm twisting this over here. Whoa, whoa, right? I'm twisting that. Okay, so let's see if we can kind of sketch that. Kind of. Okay. So it's going to come out. And then down. And then back up to maybe like that. Okay. Now what did I draw there? 
Okay, and what happens here is right here, okay, which I didn't draw it super good, but I tried. I tried really hard though. Okay, maybe that's a little bit better. Not really, that should be straighter. Okay. Anyway, what's going on there, okay? This guy right here is called the inflection point. And remember, that's where our moment went from negative to positive, right? Whoops, I drew that exactly backwards. So we get an inflection point here. What is an inflection point? This curve went from being concave down until that point, and then the curve changed to concave up, right? It, it, it changed the complete direction uh, that the slope was headed, okay? So again, over here at the wall, we know that the deflection is zero. Uh, we know the slope is zero. So over here at the wall, we know that the theta equals to zero. And we know over here y is going to equal zero at that point. Now the next video, I'm going to show you how we're going to write equations that define this load function, okay? We write equations that define this load function. Then we integrate to get this guy, and we integrate again to get this guy. Now we've already done this before back in shear moment diagrams. Remember when we section the beam, we cut the beam, and every time you cut the beam, you must have a MNV, right? We went and solved for that M, right? And we said M equals some function. What is that? That function describes the M curve at that point of the curve, okay? So we're going to take that function, that M function, we're going to integrate that down here, and he's going to get a constant of integration also, plus C1, or maybe plus C2, depending. And then we'll take that equation and we'll integrate that again. Now I've got a plus C3 and a plus C4. And the trick is, is going and finding all of those constants of integration. But I'm going to show you how to do it. The worst part of it, it's just some algebra, some substitution. That's it. The rest of it, pretty straightforward. So don't be scared. I got you. So I hope that you understand just the basics of beam bending and what's going on and what slope and deflection means. So in the next, next video, we're going to start calculating, okay? So get your popcorn popped and let's get into this, okay? See you on the next video.